requested to either switch off their mobile or keep it on May I have your Lordship's permission to commence the proceedings of the court? Yes, Mr. Attorney General. Honorable the Chief Justice of India, Honorable Judges of the Supreme Court, the Solicitor General of India, Additional Solicitor General, President and Office Bearers of the Supreme Court Bar Association, President and Office Bearers of the Supreme Court Advocates and Record Association, mm -hmm. Members of the Bar, Family members are Sri K. P. Dandabani, Sri R. D. Agrawala, Sri D. K. Agarwal, and Sri Bhagavan Datta, ladies and gentlemen. When we gather to pay homage to the Council of Eminence, who carved out a niche for themselves, who stood by the highest values of the profession, showed us the importance of values in other public callings, we find it difficult to gather all the chronicles about them and to compress them in a brief while. I say so as I had an opportunity of knowing all the four counsel to whom we pay homage today. Sri K.P. Dandapani, Senior Advocate. I am one of the many who had the privilege of knowing the vibrant and distinguished Senior Advocate, Sri Mr. K.P. Dandapani, and I can utter that his life embodied the qualities of a lawyer envisioned under all ethical codes. It is not unusual that persons who stand by the commitment to the basic values of the legal profession become examples of several accomplishments. In the early days, days of his career, Sri K.P. Dandabani was drawn to legal reporting in more than one way. What he used to pen down every day about the courtroom proceedings occupied the pages of Malayala Manorama the next day. This led to a natural transition to becoming a seasoned judgment reporter. And so he became the reporter for Kerala a long time, for a good period. In 1973, when he was appointed the Advocate Commissioner, for supervising the conduct of the well-known Santosh Trophy football tournament held in Kerala, it acquitted him well for further court recognitions. One of his former chamber colleagues, Sri K. Jajababu's senior advocate, pithily conveyed the qualities of Mr. Dandapani in his reference speech in honor of Sri Dandapani as Dandar, I say. He had qualities that no one expected and few had ever seen. He was a multitasker par excellence. His passion to reach his goals, optimism, belief in himself, Persistence to face setbacks, creativity, original thinking, self-discipline to avoid distractions, desire to improve, never considering himself perfect, and commitment to learning, searching for another when you have one decision in your favor, made him a senior having unconventional ways to success. Transitioning seamlessly from the bar to the bench for a short while and then back later, and later serving as the Advocate General for the state, Mr. Dandabani's legal career has touched people from all walks of life, 
in demonstration of his public esteem and his eminence. Senior advocate is Gopakumar Nayar, the then president of the Kerala High Court Advocates Association. On the occasion of his elevation, Sri Dandapani as an additional judge of the Kerala High Court said, I quote, Sri K.P. Dandapani is a self-made person. There is no word as impossible in the life dictionary. Even as a college boy, he has met all the challenges with some sort of vengeance to conquer them. That an unsurrendering nature has brought him to the momentous junction in his life, I quote. Having apprentice in the chambers of the legendary late Sri Ishwaraya, he earned his due laurels. His profound understanding of law spread in several legal domains, including constitutional, civil, criminal, and corporate law, and ultimately led his appointment as the judge of the Kerala High Court in 1996. He chose to return to the bar after just three months, persuaded perhaps by the true call of his profession. Both before and after his appointment as Advocate General, I had occasion of sharing professional engagements with him, and most memorably being together in the company of Justice V.R. Krishnaya during my several visits to Kerala. Serving as the Advocate General for the State of Kerala from 2011, his five-year tenure exemplified his unwavering but well-balanced commitment to both the judiciary and the government. As it is said, if learning begets courage and commitments yield creativity, Sri K.P. Dandabani epitomized his courage and creativity by steadfastly standing by his conviction, even when they conflicted with the state government stand, notably in the famous Mulla Periyar case. It must be stated to the credit of Mr. Dandapani that he truly belonged to the special class of advocate generals who stood by the values of objectivity, independence, and depth of understanding of the status and role of an advocate general. Among his many notable achievements spanning over five decades, the handling of the Italian Marines case in 2012 stands out. Despite immense international pressure, it was known that the Chief Minister's trust in his capabilities that he entrusted him with the case, resulting in substantial results for the victims' families. While Mr. Dandapani was on the bench with Justice John K. Matthews, the bench went to the Limca Book of Records by disposing about 38,000 cases of revenue recovery claims of a cheap fund company, which went to liquidation in one day. Being gifted with those special endowments, demonstrating multitasking abilities, KP Dandabani's passion, optimism, persistence, creativity, self-discipline, and the desire for improvement and commitment to learning set him apart as a senior advocate with unconventional path to success. And he has thus truly earned a coveted place in the annals of the Supreme Court Bar and the National Bar. His mentorship nurtured a generation of successful lawyers, including senior advocate Jaja Babu and G. Sri Kumar, was flurried before the Kerala High Court. Many of his former associates went on to hold prestigious positions in the legal and administrative realms. His mortal reigns remain stay as a sturdy material for budding medical professionals at the Medical College Kalamasari. This courageous decision during his lifetime reflects one layer of his multifaceted personality as many of us hold. His legacy lives on, serving as a source of inspiration. Survived by his wife, senior advocate Sumadhi Dandapani, daughter Mitu Dandapani, son Milu Dandapani, son-in-law Manoj Gopalan, daughter-in-law Archana, granddaughters Manisha, Meghana, and Ameya, K.P. Dandapani leaves behind a cherished legacy that will endure through his family and professional achievements. May his grieving family, including beloved wife Sumadhi so Dandapani, find peace and solace as they navigate this loss. Sri Adi Agrawala. Sri Adi, Mr. Adi Agrawala, senior advocate, a vibrant personality, leaves behind a distinguished legal career and a legacy cherished by all who had the privilege of knowing him. In the fabric of legal fraternity Supreme Court bar, the name of Mr. Adi Agrawala occupies a due space as a model of excellence, integrity, and warmth. Mr. Agrawala belonged to a class of persons who could with ease secure entry into judicial services and that too in more than one judi state judicial service at about the same time. On being selected for judicial service in the states of Bihar and Rajasthan, Sri Agrawala chose the Rajasthan judiciary initially. In the year 1970, with the opening of the Delhi Judicial Service, Mr. Agrawala joined the Delhi Judicial Services and began yet another chapter serving the judiciary. After serving a full tenure of office, he returned to practice and on selection by the UPSC, he came to be appointed as senior government advocate and took charge of the central agency section by the Ministry of Law and Justice. The responsibilities of the office, which he discharged with great amount of dedication, also opened up the scope for demonstration of his capacity and competence to represent various governments and public bodies, both before the Supreme Court of India and the Delhi High Court as well. Being a person with a relentless passion for work and pursuit of excellence, after completing his tenure as a senior government advocate, he continued with his private practice in many fields 
and has got designated as senior advocate with the Delhi High Court in April 2001. Before his striving legal practice, he Adya Gravala served in various esteemed positions throughout his career. Besides becoming a member of Delhi Higher Judicial Service, where he functioned as district judge, he also served as senior judicial member of the Income Tax Appellate Tribunal, where he presided over the UP benches with distinction and as judicial secretary, chief vigilance officer, then IG prison of the notorious cellular jail Andaman in Nakabar Islands, and registrar and appellate side to the Honorable High Court of Calcutta, and joint secretary and legal advisor to the government of India. In each of these roles, showcase Sri Adi Agrawala's versatility, competence, and dedication to the principles of justice and fairness. Mr. Agrawala cultivated a thriving legal practice and emerged as a highly sought after counsel, particularly by public corporations, by their service and arbitration cases before the Honorable Supreme Court. As a prominent member of the Supreme Court Bar Association, he was renowned for his popularity and could often found be regaling his peers and juniors with anecdotes and poetry in the corridors of the court. Music, especially ghazals, held a special place in his heart, serving both as a solace and expression. His great sense of humor endeared him to friends and colleagues of all ages. Additionally, Sri Adya Gawala undertook numerous pro bono cases throughout his 24 years practice in the Supreme Court. Sri Adya Garwala was a man of manifold passions. While his professional achievements were remarkable, his personal life was enriched by diverse interests, each reflecting a different facet of his vibrant personality. Throughout his illustrious career, Sri Adya Garwala epitomized the highest standards of legal professionalism, integrity, and ethical conduct, leaving an indelible mark in the pages of the Supreme Court bar. Sri Adya Garwala's unwavering commitment to his family was central to his identity. He cherished his role as a devoted husband, a father, a father-in-law, and a grandfather, finding immense joy and fulfillment in the company of his loved one. Known for his jovial nature, just for life, and ability to connect with people from all walks of life, Sri Adya Garbala's door is always open to those seeking guidance or support. I recollect many a matters where we held briefs together, either together or opposing each other. The disarming smile he used to wear, and the way he could pull you to his side, was one of the special characteristics which one would always feel jealous about. Mr. Agrawala often expressed his desire not to persevere in a state of incapacity and which was granted as he continued to work tirelessly until his final days, embodying his unwavering spirit and dedication to his profession. Sri D. K. Agarwal, Senior Advocate. Mr. Agarwal, born in 1929 in Najibabad district, Bajnur, UP, hailed from a prominent business family. And despite his family's expectation for him to join the family business, he opted for an entirely different path, choosing to pursue higher education outside Najibabad and later into law. Evolving over time through exposure to diverse political ideologies, the expanded social circles, and the extensive reading of leftist literature, Mr. D.K. Agarwal transitioned into a labor leader, advocating for the rights of workers in textile mills such as Brilla mills and DCM mills, among others. He earned the moniker Comrade D.K. through his deep involvement with the Marxist party, consistently championing the cause of the marginalized and the weaker sections of the community. Mr. Agarwal enrolled at the Bar Council of Punjab and High Court in 1958 and admitted as an advocate of the Supreme Court of India in 1960. The initial years, it is recorded, were marked by huge struggles and perseverance as he endeavored to establish himself in the legal profession, particularly in the field of labor law. By 1975, it is said he had emerged as a respected counsel with a thriving practice, specializing in labor and industrial laws, education law, constitutional law, and corporate law too. His designation as senior advocate of Delhi High Court in 1989 underscored his stature in the legal fraternity. Throughout his career, Mr. Agarwal provided expert testimony before several wage boards and appeared before national and state level arbitration boards tasked with determining wages for workers in cement and textile industries. He was also invited by prestigious universities to assess the LLM and PhD candidates. He belonged to a cadre of legal practitioners who tirelessly advocated the rights of the working class. As he aged, Mr. Agarwal gradually reduced his courtroom presence, transitioning to academia. He devoted their first to scholarly pursuits, notably contributing to the monograph on the constitution entitled India in the International Encyclopedia of Laws, Constitutional Law, published by Kluver Law International. Assuming the roles of the co-patron and general secretary of the Association of Indian Labor Union, Mr. Agarwal edited the journal, The Popular Jurist, showcasing his commitment to secularism and egalitarianism. 
Mr. Agarwal was characterized by his flesh and demeanor, infectious positivity, and unwavering courtesy. Known for his hospitality, he remained unflustered even in challenging situations, often responding to inquiries about his well being with a cheerful statement on top of the world. A polymath with a deep interest in philosophy, social sciences, history, literature, and law, Mr. Agarwal also harbored a profound love for classic melodies and ghazals. He embodied the epitome of a gentleman in every sense. He peacefully departed in January 27, 2024, four weeks after the passing away of his wife, Shrimadi Pushpa Agarwal, in December 30, 2024. He has left behind three grandsons and a granddaughter and a worthy son-in-law, all as members of the bar. Mr. Bhagavan Datta, the life of Mr. Bhagavan Datta, born in 1935 in, in a small village in district Muzaffagar in West Punjab, now part of Pakistan, is an inspiring story of perseverance and an indomitable will to survive and grow. His early schooling took place at the local Sanadan Dharma school. The partition upheaval of 1947 disrupted the education like it did in the case of a large number of people. It recorded that the notwithstanding, the immense challenges the family faced, like the multitude of displaced people, the family made their way to Delhi, and like many others, they found their shelter in a refugee camp. Like the stories of multitude of displaced people, the resumption of the education is stated to be a matter of challenge. The demise of his father at an early age brought several responsibilities on his shoulders, being the eldest son in the family and one among 12 siblings. In 1950, the family relocated to Ambala Cantonment. In 1955, Mr. Datta moved to Delhi in search of employment and pursued a study of law in evening classes. For a person with perseverance and dedication, obstacle did not stop him from working his way ahead. It was apparently the score sheet of his student days and his engagement in social and political activities earned him the possibility of joining his team chambers the renowned lawyer, Mr. G. S. Patak, initially as an office assistant. His dedication and hard work soon earned him an opportunity to actively and ably assist the senior in significant number of matters. The then well-known and unchallenged law firm of J.B. Dada Chanji and Company, he said to have pleasingly engaged him for service for drafting petitions in view of his drafting skills and acumen. He frequently briefed eminent senior accounts, including C.K. Daftari, Mr. H.R. Gokhale, and Mr. Ashok Sen, and was thus best out with the opportunity of enhancing his forensic skill and enlarging his practice. We find his name as counsel for parties in many matters, including the bank nationalization, the previous versus case, where he ably assisted the senior counsel. Mr. Datta also earned considerable work in the then emerging areas of education and service law. He represented universities and colleges in matters relating to medical education, and the reported orders show that his forensic contribution in these fields do stand high. His legal career gained the momentum as he established successful practice as an advocate in record on the Supreme Court and regularly appearing in the Delhi High Court and various other high courts. Despite his busy schedule, he remained active in the Bar Association Bar Council activities, serving as secretary of the Supreme Court Bar Association and holding multiple terms as a member and chairman of the Bar Council of Delhi. In 1983, Ms. Dasa was designated as senior advocate, both by the Supreme Court of India and the Delhi High Court on the same day, a rare honor indeed. He served as the additional Solicitor General of India from 1985, and the quality and standard of assistance to the court expected of such office. He later became preoccupied in international arbitration matters across different jurisdictions. Again, from 2004 to 2009, he resumed his role as additional Solicitor General in the Supreme Court of India in the recognition of his quality of assistance to the court. He used to express his firm view that in cases where an ordinary citizen was pitted against the state, it is the foremost duty of the bar to address the grievance of the citizen. Although Mr. Datta was involved in significant commercial litigation, including international commercial arbitrations, he was most enthused about cases where he could bring succor and relief to ordinary citizens, especially students and members of the armed forces. Many such instances he fondly used to recount frequently. Some lighter moments of his position as a secretary of the Supreme Court Bar Association included installation of a television set in the Bar Library Hall. And it is said that the then Honorable Chief Justice, Y.V. Chandrachur, was invited by him to visit the bar room to allay the concerns raised in the bar. And the visit of the Honorable the Chief Justice brought, brought down the curtain on the issue. Health issues led him to scale back his practice after 2010, opting to spend more time with his family and pursue writing. During this period, he has worked and written on many subjects of law, 
with the family is desired as a publishing. He is survived by his wife, Prem Bhagavan Datta, daughters Sangeetha Vora and Neeraj Kapoor, both members of the Supreme Court Bar Association, son Sachin Datta is Delhi High, Delhi High Court, and grandson Madhav Datta is studying law. I had the pleasure of appearing with, watching, and moving with all the four eminent counsel, and I miss each one of them in one way or the other. I must say with sadness that many from whom I learned in many ways are no longer with us. May their souls rest in peace. Mr. Garo. Honorable Dr. Chief Justice T. Y. Chantur, Chief Justice of India, other Honorable Judges of Supreme Court, Learned Attorney General for India, Mr. R. Mekantodamni, Learned Solicitor General for India, Mr. Tushar Mehta, Learned Additional Solicitors, Mr. Vikramjit Banerjee and S. Varebhati, Senior Advocates, Mr. Sukumar Patjoshi, Vice President, Mr. Rohit Pandey, Honorary Secretary and other office bearers and members of Supreme Court Bar Association, and Mr. Rakesh Khanna, former President of SCBA, Mr. Vipin Nair, President, Mr. Amit Sharma, Vice President, and Mr. Nikhil Jain, Vice Secretary, Honorary Secretary of Supreme Court Advocate on Record Association, family members of late Mr. K. P. Danpani, late Mr. R. D. Agarwala, late Mr. D. K. Agarwal, and late Mr. Bhagwan Datta, including Mr. Justice Sachin Datta, Judge High Court of Delhi, officers of Registry of Supreme Court, including Secretary General Mr. Atul Kurekar, and my brothers and sisters in the legal profession. We have gathered here to pay homage to our most distinguished legal numeraries and pure souls, late Mr. K. P. Dandapali, late Mr. R. D. Agarwala, late Mr. D. K. Agarwal, and late Mr. Bhagwan Datta, all distinguished senior advocates who practiced before this honorable court. Mr. K. P. Dandapani, senior advocate, was born on 11th May 1943 to Mr. K. Padmanabhan and Mrs. Narayani. He completed his schooling and study of law at Arnakulam. Mr. Dandapani commenced his practice in law in 1968 as junior to Mr. S. S. Varya Ayer, who was a highly respected advocate of the Kerala High Court. He practiced in all branches of law, whether it be civil, criminal, constitutional, or administrative matters, and had appeared in all courts from the land tribunal right up to the Supreme Court. He had groomed an array of juniors associates, many of whom are reputed senior counsels with the, with the flourishing practice today. Few of them are also present sitting judges of Kerala High Court. In 2007, the full court of High Court of Kerala designated Mr. K. P. Dandapani as senior counsel along with his wife Srimati Sumati Dandapani, making them the first lawyer couple of India to become designated senior on the same day. Mr. Dandapani was appointed as the Advocate General for the State of Kerala in 2011 and continued as such till 2016. Mr. Dandapani was more than just an expert in law. He was a friend, a mentor, and a family member to all who knew him. Mr. Dandapani was not just a legal luminary, he was a humanitarian at heart. His legacy will live on, not only in the legal community, but also in the countless lives he touched with kindness, generosity, and unwavering commitment to justice. Mr. Dandapani will be deeply missed, but never forgotten. Even in death, Mr. Dandapani continued to serve humanity. He selflessly dedicated his body to scientific research and medical experimentation, ensuring that even his, in his passing, he would be of value to society. Mr. I. D. Agarwala, senior advocate, was born on July 9, 1936 in Farukhabad in Uttar Pradesh. He pursued his higher education at the University of Allahabad, often referred to as the Oxford of the East, where he earned his BA and LLB degrees. 
Mr. Agarwala exhibited exceptional merit by excelling in the judicial service examination for the states of Bihar and Rajasthan in the same year. In 1970, with the establishment of the Delhi Judicial Service, he joined Delhi Judicial Service in Delhi. From 1983 to 1987, Mr. Agarwala served as senior government advocate. During this period, he served as the in charge of the Central Agency section of the Ministry of Law and Justice, representing the central government, participating states, Delhi, Delhi Police, and the CBI before the Honorable Supreme Court of India. After 1987, Mr. Agarwala transitioned into private practice where for over 25 years he practiced law tirelessly in april 2001 he was honored with the designation of the senior advocate by the honorable high court of delhi his other notable designations include being chief vigilance officer inspector general prisons of the notorious cellular jail in andaman and nicobar island registrar Appellate of the Honorable High Court of Calcutta, Joint Secretary and Legal Advisor to the Government of India and Senior Judicial Member of the Income Tax Appellate Tribunal. Mr. Agarwala's journey was not just about legal precedents and courtroom crimes. It was about the lives he touched and the hearts he uplifted. His infectious enthusiasm unwavering principles and boundless compassion continue to represent through the corridors of justice. Mr. Garwala often expressed his sentiment saying, I do not wish to die on a wheelchair. He wish, his wish was granted by the Almighty as he continued to work, continued to work tirelessly until his very last day. He was my day master as I worked as Central Government Counsel in Supreme Court as when he was in charge of Central Agency. Mr. D. K. Agarwal, Senior Advocate, was born on 10th August 1929 in Najibabad in District Bijnor of Uttar Pradesh into a renowned business family. Though his family desired that he should join the family business, Mr. Agarwal chose a different course in life and preferred to move out of Najibabad to pursue higher education. He graduated from the University of Allahabad and was conferred the LLB degree by the University of Delhi. Mr. Agarwal started law practice as pleader in 1958 and began to practice in Supreme Court in 1960. The initial years were those of struggle and efforts to establish himself in the legal profession. By 1975, he was fully established as an advocate with a flourishing legal practice. He specialized in labor and industrial laws, education laws, constitutional and corporate laws. Mr. Agarwal was designated as senior advocate by the High Court of Delhi on 29th April 1989, notably, Mr. Agarwal also appeared before the wage boards and the national and state level arbitration boards engaged in the task of determining wages for cement and textile workers. He was also invited by prestigious universities to examine and interview LLM and PhD students. With advancing age, he reduced his practice in the court of law and dedicated himself to academic pursuits and worked on the monograph of the constitution titled India International Encyclopedia of Laws Constitutional Law, which was published by Clover Law International, the Netherlands. A pleasant, smiling, and courteous gentleman, it was hard to find him ruffled, always at his best in hospitality, his positivity in life was infectious and one can never forget his response on top of the world when asked how are you well read in philosophy theology social sciences history 
literature and law, and with the great love for old melodies and gazals, Mr. Agarwal was a perfect gentleman, as one would define a gentleman to be. Mr. Agarwal attained eternal peace on 27th January 2024. Mr. Bhagwan Datta, senior advocate, was born in 1935 in a small village in district Mujaffargarh in West Punjab, now in Pakistan. His early education was at the local Sanatan Dharma School. Mr. Datta was still in middle school in 1947 when partition struck India. With great difficulty, his family managed to reach Delhi. The family stayed in a refugee camp for a considerable period of time and thereafter house was allotted in Rohtak by the government in lieu of properties in West Punjab. His family stayed in Rohtak, which is also my native place. Mr. Datta managed to complete his schooling and graduation through a lot of struggle. After completing law, he joined the chamber of Mr. G. S. Pathak, senior advocate, who later became vice president of India. Mr. Datta got the opportunity to get involved in several significant matters such as the bank nationalization case and the privy purse case. Gradually, he developed a flourishing practice as an advocate on the court. Mr. Datta was designated as senior advocate in May 1983. He probably has the distinction of being the only lawyer to be designated as a senior advocate by the Honorable Supreme Court of India and by the Honorable Delhi High Court on the same day. In 1985, he was appointed as the additional Solicitor General of India. Since the 1990s, he became actively involved in the international arbitration matters in different jurisdictions across the world. From 2004 to 2009, he again served as the additional Solicitor General in the Supreme Court. He was honored with the National Citizens Award in 1992 by the Honorable Vice President of India, Mr. K. R. Narayanan, for his unique contribution in the field of law. After 2010, due to health issues, he gradually reduced his practice and preferred to spend time with family and in writing. During this period, he wrote a couple of books, which I feel his family will publish soon. Mr. Tata was an extremely spiritual person. Not many people know that besides law, he was a keen student of comparative religion. He was well versed with religious practices of different religions and the rationale thereof. He has even written extensively on the subject. Mr. B. Datta was an inspirational personality. He overcame tremendous odds to rise in the profession through sheer heart and determination. Despite several constraints, he never allowed himself to be bogged down by circumstances or by those who were more privileged than him. All four senior, advoca senior advocates will be remembered as calm, kind and generous persons who motivated many young lawyers. The demise of these eminent senior lawyers has left a void in the legal profession because they were fearless torch bearers of justice who created a path of their own as champion of rights of the common man. I will cherish my association with all the four senior advocates forever and their demise as a great personal loss to me. Being a, the president of Supreme Court Bar Association, I offer condolences to their families 
and respectfully pay homage to them. Jai Bharat. My esteemed colleagues, the Attorney General uh, for India, the Solicitor General of India, additional Solicitors General, the Presidents, Vice Presidents, Secretaries and Office Bearers of SCBA and SCORA, distinguished members of the Bar, and the dear family and friends of Mr. Keti Dandapani, Mr. R.D. Agarwala, Mr. D.K. Agarwal, and Mr. Bhagwan Datta. We have gathered here today to commemorate the life and legacy of four distinguished senior members of the Bar and senior counsel whose insights and advocacy enriched the fabric of our legal system. Mr. K.P. Dandapani was a skilled and articulate lawyer renowned for his leadership within the Bar of the Kerala High Court. He was a mentor to all who sought his assistance and loved for his affable and approachable nature. Mr. Dandapani was born on 11 May 1943. He began his legal career by acquiring his degree in law from the Government Law College, Ernakulam, and commenced his practice in 1968 as junior to S. Ishwar who was a respected advocate of the Kerala High Court. He formed a personal and professional alliance with his law college peer, Sumati. Together, they established an independent practice and swiftly gained recognition within the legal community. Clients began to throng the office of this lawyer couple who meticulously prepared the briefs and presented them impressively before the courts. Their firm, Dandapani Associates, became synonymous with legal expertise in days when there were few law firms. The firm holds the record for the maximum number of company cases filed and disposed of in a single day. Mr. Dandapani's practice spanned across civil, criminal, constitutional, and administrative matters. And he appeared in all fora from tribunals to the Supreme Court. Statutory corporations, corporate bodies, and local self government institutions had him on retainer. He was elected as president of the Kerala High Court's Asso Advocates Association in 1995. It was at his instance, as the president of the association, that display boards showing the status of cases being taken up in various courts were put up for the first time in the Kerala High Court. A forerunner for technological advancement. This proved to be a boon for lawyers anxiously rushing up from one court to another, anticipating when their cases would be taken up. In 1996, Mr. Dandapani was elevated to the bench of the Kerala High Court, but he could not quite shake the thrill of arguing, and he soon returned to the bar and resumed his practice. His decision to leave judgeship did not diminish his desire to contribute to the nation, and he would go on to serve as the Advocate General of Kerala. In 2007, the full court of the High Court of Kerala designated Mr. K.P. Dandapani, together with his wife, Sumati, as senior counsel. Mr. Dandapani transcended his role as a legal expert, extending his influence as a confidant, guide, and as an integral part of the lives of those around him, whom he nurtured. He possessed an exceptional talent for nurturing personal connections with colleagues and associates, regarding them with the same care and consideration as he did his own. Mr. Dandapani spurned the stereotype of a maverick lawyer who was a terror to work with. Instead, he groomed an array of junior associates, many of whom are reputed senior counsel with a flourishing practice today. Some of them have adorned the bench. His unwavering devotion and steadfastness were apparent in all facets of his existence. His legacy will live on, not only in the legal community, but also in the countless lives he touched with his kindness, generosity, and commitment to justice. In the tapestry of India's legal heritage, Mr. R.D. Agarwala's name shines bright as a beacon of excellence, integrity, and warmth. Born on 9 July 1936, his formative years in Farukabad was shaped by his participation in the Uttar Pradesh Battalion of the National Cadet Corps, instilling in him a commitment to physical fitness and a sense of duty towards his country and fellow citizens a commitment that remained steadfast through us throughout his life. Mr. Agarwala pursued his higher education at Allahabad University, where he earned his Bachelor of Arts degree in 1956, followed by a Bachelor's of Law degree in 1959. Upon completing his legal studies, Mr. Agarwala exhibited exceptional merit by excelling in the judicial service examination for the states of Bihar and Rajasthan in the same year. 
His performance earned him placements in both states. With the distinction of securing the top position in the judicial service examination for the state of Bihar, he chose, however, to serve in the judiciary of Rajasthan. In 1970, with the establishment of the Delhi Judicial Service, Mr. Ardi Agarwala embraced a new chapter in his career, dedicating his expertise and leadership to the nascent judicial system of the capital city. He transitioned into legal practice with his selection by the UPSC as a senior government advocate in 1983. During this period, he also served as the in charge of the Central Agency section of the Ministry of Law and Justice, representing the central government, participating states, Delhi police, and the CBI before this court. Mr. R.D. Agarwala remained actively engaged in the legal arena for over 25 years, handling important arbitration and service cases before constitutional courts. In April 2001, he was designated as a senior advocate by the Delhi High Court, a testament to his legal skills and contribution to the legal fraternity. His personal life was enriched by a myriad of passions. One of them was music, particularly ghazals. Whether listening to the soul-stirring melodies of legendary ghazal singers, attending live performances, or hosting karaoke sessions with family and friends, he found immense joy and fulfillment in the world of music. He captivated all with his eloquent quotes, enchanting shairi, and amusing anecdotes. That even at the age of 87, Mr. R.D. Agarwala remained actively engaged in the legal profession is a tribute to his un unwavering spirit as to his discipline. His door was open to those who sought his guidance or support, and his willingness to share his knowledge and experience was unmatched. His infectious enthusiasm, resolute principles, and boundless compassion continue to reverberate through the corridors of justice. Born on 10 August 1929 in Najibabad to a renowned business family, Mr. D.K. Agarwala shunned the parental temptation that he joined the family business. He moved out of Najibabad to pursue higher education and graduated from the University of Allahabad in 1947, where he received his LLB degree and later uh, from the University of Delhi in 1952. Mr. D.K. Agarwal enrolled with the Bar Council of the Punjab High Court in 1958 and as an advocate of the Supreme Court of India in 1960. By 1975, he was fully established as an advocate with a flourishing legal practice. Mr. D.K. Agarwal believed in the importance of labor rights. He fought cases for the rights of the workers of textile factories. He specialized in labor and industrial law. He consistently took a stand for marginalized and vulnerable sections of our society. He was an expert in the law relating to education, constitutional law, and company law. During the course of his legal career, Mr. Agarwal tendered evidence before the wage boards and appeared before the national and state level arbitration boards, engaged in the task of determining wages for cement and textile workers. Mr. D.K. Agarwal was designated as a senior counsel by the Delhi High Court on 29 April 1989. A pleasant, smiling, and courteous human being, it was hard to imagine him being ruffled. His positivity in life was infectious, and one can never forget his response to the question, how are you, as the speaker before me said, to which he habitually responded, on top of the world. Throughout his illustrious career, Mr. D.K. Agarwal exemplified high standards of professionalism, integrity, and warmth, and generosity that made not just him a noted lawyer, but a good human being as well. His legacy continues to inspire generations of legal practitioners, leaving an indelible mark on India's legal landscape. Mr. Bhagwan Datta was born in 1935 in Muzaffargarh in erstwhile West Punjab. He was in the middle school in 1947 when partition took place. After a perilous train journey, his family ma managed to reach Delhi. The family stayed in a refugee camp for a considerable period of time. Since the financial condition of the family was precarious, Mr. Datta's education was disrupted and could resume only after a couple of years when his father finally landed a regular job. But this did not hinder his growth or intellectual abilities. Mr. Datta passed his matriculation examination in the early 1950s, completed his BSc from DAV College in Ambala, Kant, and then shifted to Delhi. After completing his law, he joined the chambers of Mr. G.S. Patak, senior advocate, who later became vice president of India, and who was the father of the former chief justice, Justice Raghunandan Swaroop Patak. Initially, he was employed as an office assistant, but through dint of hard work, he caught the attention of a senior and started getting opportunities to actively brief and appear with him in important cases. By 1963, his innate talent was finding recognition 
and he started getting briefs as a drafting counsel in numerous cases, especially those filed by the redoubtable Jimmy Dadachanji of JB Dadachanji and Company, a preeminent firm at that time. He frequently briefed eminent senior counsel of the time, including C.K. Daftari, H.R. Gokhale, and Ashok Sen. He was involved in several significant cases, including those relating to bank nationalization and privy, cup, privy purses. By this point, his practice gained momentum, and there was no looking back. He developed a reputation as an advocate on record in the Supreme Court and regularly appeared in the High Court of Delhi and other high courts. He was a true presence in Niti Bagh, where would, one would see him early mornings taking his morning constitutional. Mr. Datta kept himself involved in the activities of the Bar Association and the Bar Council. He served as Secretary of the Supreme Court Bar Association and was elected as a member of the Bar Council of Delhi on multiple occasions. Uh, he remained its chairman for several years. Mr. B. Datta was designated as a senior advocate of this court in May 1983, one of the few at the time who came to be designated from the ranks of the advocates on record. He holds the distinction of having been designated as a senior advocate by the Supreme Court of India and by the Delhi High Court. Two, two years later, in 1985, he was appointed as additional Solicitor General of India and represented the Union government with distinction even after his reappointment from 2004 till 2009. Mr. Bhagwan Datta was a seasoned lawyer known for his dedication to law, intellect, and his pursuit of fairness and equity in every case that he undertook. His work ethics saw him rise from humble beginnings to the higher echelons of the legal profession. His life will remain a source of inspiration for young lawyers beginning their practice on making the art of the possible a reality. All four of these eminent individuals possessed a passion for the law, defended the rights of the less unfortunate of our society, and brought distinction to their work and to themselves. Each of them gave back to the legal community in their own unique way. They have left the legal fraternity stronger than when they joined it. Their memories will remain present in the hearts of all those who had the privilege of knowing them. As we bid them farewell, let us cherish the memories of their remarkable lives and the influence they've had on our profession and society. May I request all of you to stand up and observe two minutes silence in memory of the four distinguished lawyers whose memory we have honored this morning. Have your lordship's permission to conclude the proceedings of the court. Yes. 
entire class for the opportunity. Uh, the court will sit for normal work at 11.30 a.m. <laughs>